Well, there are several reasons why Leonardo was so fascinated uh, with water. And I think ultimately all these reasons have to do with his <clears throat> persistent quest for understanding the nature of life. So one reason was that he correctly saw water as the carrier and matrix of life. There's a very beautiful passage where he writes, uh, water is the extension and humor of all living forms. Without it, nothing can maintain its form. Humor there being a medieval word that means a nourishing fluid. So he saw the role of water <coughs> as transporting nutrients to the tissues of living organisms and in uh, the macrocosm of the earth transporting you know, nourishment to the plants in the fields. And he also saw it as the matrix of life. He realized that uh, all life originated in water and exists in a watery environment. <coughs> so in the cells, he didn't know about cells of course, but today we know that in the cells of plants and in our human cells, the cells exist in a watery environment, the environment of the cell fluid. So, uh, you know, water is the extension of all forms, as he said. It's the matrix of life. So that was one reason. The other reason was that his fascination with turbulent flows, I believe, and that's my thesis, because he didn't write about this, but it's, to me it's obvious from, from his work, his uh, realization that vortices are symbols of life in the sense that they are stable forms that are changing at the same time. There is water flowing through a, a whirlpool all the time and yet the overall shape is preserved. And that is true for all living forms. Uh, they are in the process of metabolism, as we call it today, we have a constant flow of energy and matter through a living organism. And yet the form of the living organism, the pattern of organization, remains constant. And he must have intuited that. <clears throat> and I believe that that's why he was so fascinated with, with water vortices. Leonardo was the uh, only hydraulic engineer of the Renaissance, and there were many noted, very talented hydraulic engineers, but he was the only one who made the step from engineering to science, who not only studied the flows of water empirically so as to be able to dam rivers and divert flows and so on, he did all of that and wrote abundantly about all of that, the practical aspects of hydraulic engineering. But he also asked himself, how can I represent the flow of water and understand it theoretically? What are the basic forces? What are the basic phenomena? <clears throat> and in doing so, he created the science of hydrodynamics or fluid dynamics, as we call it in the broader sense. And, and he was really the first fluid dynamicist because he realized that the principles of flow, the patterns of flow, are the same in water and air or any other liquid, any other fluid. Now, his very detailed studies of the flow of water made him understand the basic characteristics of flow. To begin with, and I will just give you a brief summary, <clears throat> he realized that there are two basic forces at play. One is the force of gravity, the other is uh, the friction that water has, which, which uh, is called viscosity. It's an old term which he used already, the, the viscosity of water. And the interplay between gravity and viscosity creates the various turbulent forms. He also realized that when you have a river that is flowing, uh, the volume of flow will be the same whether the river is narrow or the river is wide. If you have a steady river and you have a certain mass of water flowing, that mass of water stays the same because, you know, it cannot go anywhere. So 
When the river narrows, what happens? The water needs to flow faster because otherwise it, it will dam up. So uh, he studied that and that's, that's now known as the continuity principle in, in fluid dynamics. And he realized that the velocity of water is inversely proportional to the cross-section of the flow. So the smaller the cross-section, the faster the flow. And he wrote this down mathematically in exact ways. So these were just basics of the flow of water. For example, in the flow of a river, he was also the first one to realize that the flow of water is slower at the banks of the river because of the friction with the banks and is slower at the bottom of the bed again because of the friction than in the middle of the river and and he designed measuring very ingenious measuring devices to to measure the flow of water there, there were floats where there was a, a, a stick sticking out and according to the different speeds uh, the different parts of the float were, were going faster or slower and there was an angle of the stick on top that, that he could estimate. So he, he designed special instruments to measure the flows of water in a very detailed way. And then when it comes to turbulence, he was uh, the first by uh, several hundred years to realize that when you have a water vortex, as you go to the center of the vortex, the velocity gets higher and higher. It flows faster in the center, like in a, in a whirlpool, in a bathtub, for instance. It goes slowly on the outside and then speeds up as it goes inside. And he writes, this is remarkable because when you have a wheel, then the outer parts of the wheel go faster than the inner parts. But with the vortex, it's the other way around. And this was rediscovered in the 19th century by a physicist called Helmholtz. So, Leonardo was four centuries ahead in this discovery. And you know, there are lots of other discoveries about, about flow and turbulence that, that he pioneered. Today, uh, we have huge problems uh, with water because we are wasting water in our industrial processes, in our uh, system of industrialized agriculture. And we have lost the reverence for water. Uh, another aspect is that water is being commodified is being sold as a commodity rather than treating it like the air and the earth on which we walk as a common human good. And so again, you know, there's, uh, there, there are big movements re-establishing water as uh, the access to water as a common human right and, and water as part of our, of our human heritage and uh, uh, not to be uh, commodified and bought and sold.